Okay. Okay. Um, hello, Professor Fikret Birdishli. Uh, thank you for finding time for sharing your precious expertise with us. How are you today? Thank you very much. It's a rainy day. Uh, welcome from Turkey to Kazakhstan. <laughs> We're so happy to have you and we look forward to learn more about Turkey. Uh, so if you're ready, let's start with the questions. Um, yeah, and, okay. our, uh, and our first question is, um, how has Turkey's foreign policy shifted in response to changing dynamics in the Middle East over the past decade? Okay, thank you for uh, being here. First of all, I'd like to thank you for Professor Akbota to give a chance to meet for you and uh, to talk about the Turkish foreign policy with you. It's a very fantastic day and it's a very exciting things for me. Uh, uh, and I try to explain many things about the, as, uh, as possible as uh, uh, And uh, you have some question about, about uh, uh, Turkey, I know that. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, I'm not sure what you think about Turkey, or what you know about the Turkey. So uh, the Turkish foreign policy, you asked me that, shifted in response to changing dynamic in the Middle East over the past decade. The meaning of this question is you think that there's some differences or shifting in foreign policy. And uh, before the give answer this question, uh, I should give some uh, main, how can I say, uh, main information about the Turkish foreign policy. I mean, that mm -hmm. the tournament of the traditional foreign policy of the Turkey. Uh, they are two, okay? One of them is Westernism, and the other one is Staticozim. And they were generated from of per per uh, perception of the Turkey to the Middle East, besides NATO memberships, also essentially turning the foreign policy of the Turkey against other countries also. I mean, that, that this uh, perception, Westernism and Staticozim is a traditional Policy, foreign policy of the Turkey. Uh, and the meaning of the Westernism is about the willingness of the Turkey to reach uh, to the high standard of the modern world. And staticoism is that Turkey doesn't want to expand its territory or it's not willing to realize Ottoman times again. Uh, again. You know, uh, before the Turkey, Republic of the Turkey, there was a big, big uh, empire. Ottoman Empire, uh, after the Empire, Ottoman Empire, approximately 53 countries has been emerged from the, this territory. So the staticoism says that, no, we are only uh, care about our uh, territory, not uh, wants to be expand again, okay? Uh, so this is a traditional uh, perspective, perspective of the Turkey. And this political perception keep Turkey's relations with the Middle East very restricted and low level. Mm -hmm. uh, but last 20 years, uh, maybe the other question uh, in my uh, notes, the, it include uh, involvement of the Syria problem of the Turkey also. Uh, maybe we can give the answer both to a question, both of them. Uh, the last 20 years, right-wing government has embraced a kind, a kind of the revisionist politics with the vision of the neo Ottomans. I mean that uh, at the last 20 years, the idea of the neo Ottomanism has risen in Turkey. So the idea of the Ummah, Ummet yeah, in Turkish, the idea of the Ummet remains high in international politics of the Turkey. Now, the problem of that this idea isn't compatible with the real politics. Actually, nobody has any idea that the other Islamic countries have any willingness about that. No, we don't know. Yeah, we say that the, the, the Islamic world should be unified, but the other countries want such things. No. However, 
This idea caused the intervention of the some countries problem after the Arab Spring. Hence, the relationship of the Turkey with Middle Eastern country is unstable political fluctuation. Now, uh, at the beginning of the Arab Spring, the Western world supported the close interest in Turkey to the Middle East country because they thought that Turkey might be a good model for Muslim countries to integrate the Western world dominated Indonesian system. Turkey, you know, the Turkey as a moderate and secular countries. So, however, the rising power of the Erdogan and the domination of the state caused a new path to Turkey as a religious and anti-Western politics. However, the main problem with this vision is that there's a no value and no response in Muslim countries for this vision and policies. Okay? And step by step, we realize that this is a not realistic policy. So this change, yes, the Turkey's foreign policy has been changed from the uh, Westernism and Stoticism to the uh, Ummet uh, idea, Islamism, and uh, maybe revisionism, and maybe and uh, neo-Ottomanism. But today's, around to today's, uh, after the some praxis, uh, Turkey also understands it's not realistic politics. Okay. And you can pass the three countries, third uh, question. I, this uh, answer maybe cover both two, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for your response. It was really interesting to uh, not only uh, understand the main points of the policy, but also you described to us the uh, historical background, which is also important uh, when we talk about the establishment or development of some uh, dynamics in policy. So uh, now I yield the floor to my colleague Diana and uh, her questions. Hello, Professor. <clears throat> my Hello. question, uh, what impact has Turkey involvement in Syria uh, had on its regional alliances and the global standing? Yeah, I said before that, the involvement in Syria is about the changing of the foreign policy of Turkey last times, because uh, the rising power of the Erdogan, uh, the right wing's politics of Turkey thinks that the international politics should be Turkey, Turkey uh, international politics should be uh, the center of the Ummet, uh, idea of the Ummet, okay, uh, Islamism, okay. So uh, unification of the Islamic countries, I mean that, okay? And uh, so the Turkey tried to uh, involve uh, the some uh, politics in Syria after the Arab Spring, and even in Egypt also, okay? But uh, today, if you understand that, this politics is not realistic. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, very interesting. Uh, uh, so uh, now uh, we have Arjan, who also would like to ask uh, some questions about Turkey policy, uh, foreign policy guidelines. Please, Arjan. Uh, hello, Professor. Uh, so my first question is, how does Turkey navigate its relationship with both Western and Eastern powers? Uh, there's a European Union and Russia, and what challenges would like arise from the this balancing act? Okay, so good question. Uh, the relationships of the Turkey with the West and East is a conjecture now. The problem with the West depends on Kurdish question, especially the support of the United States of the America to the Kurdish terrorists in Syria caused Turkey to develop a close relationship with the Russia. But the general policy of the Russia and Turkey about, for example, Syria is the opposite sides. Okay, very different. Secondly, the 15 July COP attempt has been another ne uh, neg negative tension between Turkey and West because Turkey thinks that United States of America and some Western countries are behind this COP. Okay, then nevertheless, the close and historical relationship with the West 
keep this real, uh, relations going on. The Turkey, a member of uh, almost all international organizations, a special membership of the NATO, and Turkey is a candidate for the European Union already. So the relationship with Central Asia and the other uh, Turkish countries are generally restricted because the geographic distance and initial attitude of the Turkey. What's mean that? When Turks countries got independence from Russia, Turkey saw itself as a father, a light uh, father uh, or leader or big brother of the, these countries, Turkish countries, okay? Actually, these countries seek a comrade instead of the hierarchic relations because uh, they are grievous of the hegemon of the Russia already. Therefore, relationship with the Central Asia was not the ideal beginning. So nevertheless, great efforts of, of some leaders, the relationship with the Turkish Republic in the Central Asia are better than ever before. I believe that we have good direction to the enhanced collaboration. In my opinion, we should support the sovereignty of the independence of the Turkish countries uh, in the Central Asia and the process of the nation state. We should support that as a brother, not big brother. Okay. The crucial tools are cultural elements and diplomacy. And secondly, the collaboration on economic and security matters are very important for us. After the long search for new paradigm, uh, Turkey will realize its relationship with the both West and East on a balance according to its national interests. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your answer. Uh, now I understood uh, this relation with, especially with the uh, uh, with the Western and Eastern countries. Uh, so my next question it will be uh, also uh, related to the Turkey's historical and cultural ties uh, with the Turkic nation influence uh, in uh, foreign policy decisions in Central Asia. Yeah. Uh... Uh, SK, again, uh, sorry, I, I couldn't understand your question now. Uh, so, uh, sorry, just uh, will repeat it. Well, uh, well, in what ways does Turkey reach its geopolitical geographic uh, geopolitical uh, position to influence uh, right. geopolitics? And yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Importance? Okay, I understand, yes. And geographically, and special position is very important, you know, for international relations. Turkey has a great opportunity uh, to become a bridge between East and West. Especially Istanbul and Çanakkale Straits are very important for international trade. Besides, these three straits are very strategic because of the constraint of the Russian powers also. Uh, but you should understand that geography is a potential tool until it's elevated, um, evaluated in the good strategic planning. Okay. Yeah, you can have a very good position, but you need a good uh, strategic planning. Uh, for example, at the tension between Turkey and West caused its a seek to find another alternative route for energy security for the West. In my opinion, Turkey's geographic, uh, cultural or historical position, doesn't matter, would most benefit by following a moderate and natural role between the West and Eastern world. If we increase the tension between the West and Turkey relationship, the West try to find another way. For example, energy corridor. Okay. Uh, last time, uh, this uh, dispute about the energy corridor has been changed direction from the uh, territory of the Turkey for, from territory of the Turkey to the Mediterranean area. So yes, joint position is a very important, but strategic planning is a more than important stuff, okay? Okay, and uh, my last question uh, is, how does Turkey address the Kurdish question domestically, and how does it impact its foreign relations, particularly with the neighboring countries? Okay, yeah, the Kurdish question is a very important issue. The Kurdish question has been a very problematic area in domestic and international area also. 
Actually, the Kurdish and Turkish people have no problem among them. They get married and live together. The Kurdish people work in public sector and very high position in the bureaucracy also. There are no systematic discrimination in Turkey against the Kurdish people. They are equal citizens of the Turkey, okay? But in the past, some prohibition and oppression about the culture differences and the mother about the mother language caused some breaks between Turks and uh, Kurds, Kurdish peoples. Uh, so this problematic area has been abused by separatist idea, which has which are uh, support uh, by externally. Today, today ruling party has taken a very important step in uh, solving of this, this, uh, this problem. Nevertheless, the Kurds living in neighboring countries have been used as uh, provocative tools against Turkey, especially nationalist and Marxist approach among the Kurdish peoples caused some problem. Most Kurds believe in the same sect of the Islam, Islam. I mean that uh, the people of the Turkey and Kurdish people, they are same, uh, they are Sunni. I mean that. Uh, actually, the Kurds are Shafi and Turks uh, are Hanifi. Uh, nevertheless, uh, there is a great uh, harmony amongst them. Okay? There is no problem amongst the peoples, peoples of the Turks and uh, Kurdish people. In summary, I can say that the Kurdish problem is a democratization problem for them uh, domestically. But beyond of the borders are related to terrorism and becoming international political tools. So the, the Kurdish question, actually in Turkey, uh, there's a no Kurdish question. Uh, this question has been uh, uh, ignited by the other countries, big countries from the outside. Okay. Uh, thank you for your answers. Uh, I think we now want to start especially with the Kurdish questions because it's always just like raised in our seminars, in uh, like during our sessions in university. Uh, now um, we can uh, move to uh, my colleague, Amina. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again, Arjan. Uh, so I have another question, which is also really important, um, in my opinion. So, what role uh, does energy politics play in Turkey's foreign policy, especially in relations to the exploration and drilling activities in the Eastern Mediterranean? Yeah, it's, uh, energy is a very important uh, subject. Uh, the energy issue is the Eastern Mediterranean is a very complicated and a very contro controversial mm -hmm. issue. You know, uh, there's a no natural gas or oil extracted in the Med Mediterranean yet. Yeah, they are potential. Okay, uh, this is a thought. It's thought to uh, to be a potential. The real problem uh, arises from the sharing of the maritime uh, jurisdiction area. Okay, uh, so. The issue of the excess of the energy resources in the Mediterranean basins cause a long future because it's not yet efficient to extract natural, natural gas and oil from here. Uh, one side of the debate is related to finding alternate routes for energy transportation to West because the unstable relations between Turkey and the West. So the West tried to find another uh, route you know, uh, the main uh, energy corridors uh, comes from uh, Central Asia uh, through the Anatolia and Black Sea to Europe. But after the some tension between Turkey and West, Western world, the Western state tried to find another way and Mediterranean basin is a very important place for that. Yeah, there must be, maybe there can be a natural gas or pet petroleum, but none of them uh, extracted yet, okay? There's no antiques as now. Okay. Hmm. So, uh, thank you. And uh, our other question is, how does Turkey approach its role uh, in international organizations? 
which is really important in regional studies in our majority. So uh, what initiatives uh, does Turkey undertake to strengthen its global influence? Also, uh, the important question of okay. international relations. Yeah, yes, of course. The international organization is a very important subject for international relations students and academicians. The Turkey uh, is among 20 countries with the most powerful economy in the world. Okay, hmm. and Turkey has the most powerful conventional military force in Europe and NATO uh, after the US. Uh, Turkey is one of the secular countries of the Islamic world, and it is the only country that may be eligible for the European Union from the East. So the Turkey has great diplomatic tradition and influence because of the Ottoman Empire around it. Uh, and Turkey is a member of the almost every international organization except regional ones, okay? So Turkish people have been integrated in the Western style living and consumption culture. Nevertheless, the religions, religion is highly influenced by daily life in the Turkey, but moderate understanding of Islam. So Turks likes to be proud of their past, as everybody does, the tradition and religion. But sometimes this feeling causes the unrealistic evaluation, okay? The, about the international politics, maybe world business, okay? In my opinion, Turkey should strengthen its democracy and law and restrain from the autocratic leadership, which is widely seen in Turkish countries, in mm -hmm. Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, and the other countries also. Common platform and international organization among Turkish countries, Turkic countries, and exchange programs are very important, special education. So um, all Turkey country in Turkey, both Turkey and Central Asia, should be exchanged the students mm -hmm. and the academicians to cultural uh, integration, okay? Um, and uh, believe me, we are welcome the uh, students from the Kazakhstan and uh, Turkmenistan and Kyrgyzstan also. And my experience showed that the Kazakhstan students are very intelligent and very kindness. Okay. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your response. For you, you mentioned really um, like um, really important things about the cultural exchange, about some integrations, uh, and I uh, totally agree with you. Uh, our uh, other question is, uh, how has the refugee crisis uh, stemming from conflicts uh, influenced, uh, influenced uh, Turkey's foreign policy and diplomatic relations uh, with European nations? Yeah, so refugee crisis is a very important issue for international politics for everybody almost, especially for Europe, and it's caused rising of the tension and antagonism especially. The refugee crisis has turned to, to the domestic level in Turkey now also. It's a, uh, some kind of the crisis. It has been some kind of the crisis because there is a rising antagonism against Syria and Af Afghan immigrants because of mm -hmm. the economic crisis and undocumented Im Im immigration in Turkey. Uh, this may cause a great divide and social tension. It's a very uh, critical one. The political discourse of the leaders causes rising tension every day. Mm -hmm. And Turkey is now one of the countries hosting the most immigrants in the hosting most immigrants in the world. It seems unsustainable and unmanageable increasingly. Okay? So this is the real problem. We should deal with it. Mm -hmm. So um Yeah, uh, as we're students uh, of Kazakhstan, we couldn't um, like mention the Kazakhstan in our questions. So our last question is, how does Turkey engage with Kazakhstan economically and diplomatically, of course? And what strategic uh, initiatives exist to strengthen bilateral ties between the two countries? Uh, yes. Uh... Actually, in my honestly, if we say honestly, 
if we exclude the profile of the Nazarbayev in the Kazakhstan, mm -hmm. he has been most influential Turkish leaders who took the most important step in ensuring the unity and solidarity among the Turkish Republic in this period, in my opinion. Kazakhstan is a very important country in terms of the large territory and great potential. And Kazakhstan and its people have a very good reputation in Turkey uh, among the Turkish people. Everybody likes them. Okay? I am very pleased with the hard work and good manners of my Kazakh citizens. One of my doctorate students, for example, just got engaged in, to marry in Turkey. <laughs> Kazakhstan hosted the, a pilot, very important initiative in Indonesia area among the Turkish states. It's a balanced relation with the Russia as extremely reasonable. In my opinion, Kazakhstan is the most important the K country in Central Asia, okay? Because B countries, more potential and more stable. And Kazakhstan's strength, Kazakhstan's strength in Central Asia means that Turkey is saying in the international politics also. So the Turkey and Kazakhstan friendship of the Turkey and Kazakhstan very important. For this reason, Turkish-Kazakh relations should be strengthened as much as possible in every field. I know Kazakhstan and Kazakh, Kazakh people also very much. And Turkey's relation with the Kazakhstan reached the highest level during the Nazarbayev period and now continue already. The only obstacle to Turkey and Kazakhstan establishing a strategic partnership seems to be Russia, okay? Although the relation between Russia and Turkey seems to be quite tight compared with the past, actually the, these countries doesn't distrust uh, each of each other. Uh, so uh, in my opinion, Turkey and Kazakhstan should be making a strategic partnership in in every area, okay? Uh, and uh, in my opinion, the the Kazakhstan brilliant countries, which is reputation has been rising in the Central Asia, uh, and mm -hmm. uh, they have great opportunity for them, okay? Okay, um, thank you very much uh, for your response. And that's all uh, you answered on uh, all of our questions. So, uh, dear professor, your expertise and knowledge about Turkey have been invaluable to us. Thank you for clarifying many aspects. We deeply appreciate your contribution in our education. Uh, we hope that in future we'll have another opportunity to discuss more topics. Uh, thank you very mm. much for your time and knowledge. And um, it is uh, really an honor for us uh, that you sharing with us your um, educational experience, etc. Thank you again. You're welcome. It was very nice to such an experience with you. Uh, whenever you want, you can ask question or make a contact uh, mm -hmm. with us. And uh, maybe I hope to see you here also in Turkey also in the next time. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. So we end our session. Uh, it was Amina Nasanova. Thank you, everyone, for your attention. Goodbye. You're welcome, yes. Браво, мы успели. Все, всем спасибо. Все, давайте.